Hey, what's up, YouTube world? It is your girl here, the Venusian Bull, and I am back with another astrological tea video. And in this video, we are going to be discussing the serious, hardworking sign of Capricorn. Yes, we are going to be discussing the goat in this video. So um, get ready to buckle down and get serious. And just keep in mind as my disclaimer, as I always say, you may exhibit some of these traits that I'm about to list if your sun, moon, or rising is in Capricorn, if you have any of your personal planets in Capricorn, Mercury, Venus, or Mars, if your north or south node is in Capricorn, or if you have any planets in the 10th house which is the house of career. Very fitting because we're discussing Capricorn. Uh, duh. So um, I want to get into uh, my little blurb. You know, I have on my little uh, business, uh, you know, blazer. It's amazing, like, what a blazer can do to an outfit. It could just make you look, like, hella important, like, and you didn't even do anything except for put on a blazer. So um, I felt it fitting to wear it for the Capricorn video because, honestly, I didn't really know what else to wear for a Capricorn video. So I have, like, on brown eyeshadow goldish not too flashy try not to be too flashy i know i have on my gold hoops but whatever so we're just gonna roll with this um but capricorns don't really wear a lot of makeup anyway so there you go all right so i'm gonna go into um my little blurb about capricorn i do just want to say that i do consider myself a little bit of an honorary capricorn being that my moon is in the 10th house and i have a stellium in capricorn consisting of saturn uranus and neptune and a little bit uh later well not that much later i'm going to get into that particular generation of people um the people who were born with neptune saturn and uranus in cap and how that's affecting us right now this day and age so i'm going to get, discuss that so this is going to be pretty serious and pretty deep and i hope you guys learn a lot listening to this video i feel like i'm like even more starting to sound like a cat right now it's like i go into the mode when i go into the uh, the videos so of course i have to discuss um uh my little blurb uh so capricorn's motto is i use and i want you to remember that as i go through the characteristics of capricorn i use like i will use you just keep that in mind okay um so capricorn is ruled by saturn and that is the planet of discipline status death stability longevity it is the teacher it's about learning hard lessons it's about hard work career um represents deterioration um it's also the planet of karma um, it's a planet of structure and responsibility. So it represents a lot of things. And this is why wherever, you know, Saturn is placed in your chart, as I mentioned in my planets video, even if it's a soft or facilitating aspect like a trine or a sextile, you're still going to have to work hard at whatever that aspect is in your life. But let alone if it squares and oppositions, you're going to have a time. So I um, just want to remind you of that. Of course, Capricorn symbol is the goat, also known as the greatest of all time. You know, I like to think that that hashtag that people are always using on social media to uh, to single out certain, you know, amazing people that are the best at what they're doing stems from the astrological term that Capricorn symbol is the goat. I have to think that that's where that came from. Um, if not, please let me know where that came from because it makes perfect sense. Capricorn, the goat, like, Honestly, there seems to be no other explanation as to why that became a huge hashtag other than the presence of Capricorn. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, represents the 10th house. So, of course, you know, I have to give you the songs that represents the signs. So uh, here's one. I work hard for the money. Hey, so hard for it, honey. Uh, I work hard for the money, so you better treat her right. So that's good. Work hard for the money. Treat her right because she works hard. Um, Donna Summer. So also, I am living in a material world, and I am a material girl. You know that we are living in a material world, and I am a material girl. I don't like Madonna, really like that, but I do like some of her songs. So material girl fits because Capricorn is all about material things. Um, there was a song back in the day. I don't know if Drake was on this song too with Trey songs, but he had a song called... I just want to be, I just want to be successful. So that one, Capricorns always want to be successful. And also, this was a fun one that I came up with. You know, Capricorns aren't really known for fun, but this one, it's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Static kisses. You know the rest. 
that is too high for me to be singing right now. So Hard Knock Life from Annie or the, the remake of the song that Jay-Z did because Capricorns, they be having Hard Knock Lives. <laughs> um, so we're going to get into the nitty gritty. We need to get down to business because that is what Capricorn is about. So without any further ado, let's get it. Um, so, um, I wanted to briefly discuss the whole, uh, Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn and Cap generation. Um, so this really represents, um, people being in their, having their own business and being entrepreneurs. So this is around the time, um, like the late eighties and the early nineties, there would be people that would have these placements, specifically all three of these placements, the Saturn, Neptune, um, and Uranus, but, uh, the Neptune and Uranus, obviously they, it takes longer for those to travel, um, uh, for those to transit. So they were in the signs longer, but just as you know, a high level view of that, it's about dismantling the current structure of authority, doing things uh, like breaking down the walls of the whole nine to five. That's Uranus and Capricorn doing, you know, what you love, what you're creative at, making your dreams come true and doing that for work. That's Neptune and Capricorn and Saturn and Capricorn. Um, that's its home. It's, you know, being disciplined and putting in the hard work to make these things happen. So this whole Neptune, Uranus, especially, and even the Saturn and Capricorn is all about dismantling the current structure of authority. Like this whole like YouTube era and people making money off of YouTube and social media and all of that, all of that is Neptune and Uranus and Capricorn all the way. Like there is going to be a time where nine to fives are going to be, are going to become obsolete. And this generation is kind of ushering that in. So I kind of wanted to put that in perspective for y'all as to how, uh, this, uh, that transit was working when these people were born. Um, so, um, yeah. And also Saturn returns are also very important. Not only do people get natal chart readings, but sometimes they get Saturn return readings. And this usually happens, um, every 30 years. Um, if you're lucky enough to live through a couple of Saturn returns, that's great. But obviously when you hit about 30, that's when you go through your first Saturn return. 60 is your second, 90 is your third. And if you're lucky enough to get a fourth, God bless you. Um, so basically, uh, when you hit your Saturn return, that's like your transition, your real transition into becoming an adult. And most people don't even know about Saturn ret returns, but will still tell you, you're not really an adult until you're 30. Well, that's what happens with the Saturn return. It teaches you hard lessons about life. You're probably going to go through shit. So if you're over 30, think back to when you were 30, think back to the shit that went down and be like, Oh, I made it through that. Like that is what a Saturn return is. Usually your first Saturn return is the most difficult. Um, from what I, uh, from what I've heard. So, um, so yeah, that's something to think about as well. So, um, getting into, uh, the nitty gritty of the characteristics, um, Capricorn is very ambitious. Um, they're definitely overachievers, but they also can be very skeptical about things. If they can't see it, touch it, feel it, build it, then they don't believe it. Um, it's kind of like a Taurus in that, in that aspect. So, um, caps are kind of like the least likely to get on the astrology train. Um, so, you know, we'll see if that's still the case once I tell y'all all about yourselves, but yeah, Capricorns are like the biggest skeptics ever about everything, but especially when it comes to like astrology or anything that's not of the norm, anything that they're not, you know, like used to or anything like that. They maybe even be skeptical of a lot of religions and things like that. Um, so Capricorns are very self-sufficient, um, just like their fellow earth sign Taurus, um, reliable, determined, persistent, extremely goal oriented. They're always shooting for a goal. Um, but they can also be, uh, very, very cynical, um, less romantic, you know what I'm saying? More cynical. Cause they're kind of, uh, you know, as the juxtaposed of my Sagittarius video, they're, they're kind of the Debbie Downers, you know what I'm saying? But they use their cynicism a lot when it comes to their like sense of humor and things like that. They kind of have a dry sense of humor, kind of like sarcastic and things of that nature. Um, they're all about climbing the corporate ladder. Um, remember I talked about Libra is like the social climb. Well, Capricorn is like the business climb. They're like, 
I want to be the top executive. I want to be the CEO. So they're going to be doing whatever it takes to climb that corporate ladder. Um, they are concerned with building legacies, uh, wealth, and something to pass on for generations to come. Capricorn is kind of like the epitome of generational wealth. So they want their legacies to live on and on and on and on and on and forever. Um, so they're also very nostalgic, like the opposite sign of them, cancer. So they can be kind of obsessed with the past and, you know, um, digging up old photos and pictures and with, you know, genealogy and with their culture and things of that nature. Um, they can also be like an old soul. Um, even their look can be kind of old looking. Um, and it's been said that Capricorns kind of age backwards. So I have to give the reference of Benjamin Button. And, you know, I know that he was like kind of fell ugly when he was, you know, first born or whatever. He was a baby, but it's kind of like that. That's an extreme case, obviously. But Capricorns always have a look like they've lived, like they've lived life. And that comes through just in their face, like even as a child. So the idea of aging backwards is uh, very apparent uh, for Capricorns. So you'll see a Capricorn and you're like, you're 20? You look like you're not 20. And then by the time that they're 50, and I was like, oh, you still look like you did when you're 25. Hey, case in point, LeBron James. LeBron James is a Capricorn. People always talked about how old he looked when he was much younger. He got drafted when he was 18, but he still low key looked like he 18. So, I mean, that's kind of an example. So yeah, it, it's just kind of catching up with him. So, um, also I wanted to point out, um, a celebrity that doesn't have a cap sun, but I believe he has a cap moon because I looked it up. Um, Jaden Smith and, um, he emancipated himself from his parents, I believe, and like moved out of the house, you know, Will and Jada. Um, it was not because they were bad parents, but because at the age of 15 and 16, he realized that he was good and he didn't really need his parents anymore to take care of him. Um, so Capricorns are known to like grow up really fast. Like they get it and they ready to go out into the world. They like, I don't need this. So a Capricorn would most likely, um, be more than likely than any other sign to like move out of the house early, but they would like have a plan and stuff like that. Well, I wouldn't say that they're the only sign that would move out of the house early, like a Sag, a Gemini and stuff like that. They may do that too, but a Capricorn is going to do that knowing that they have, you know, specific goals that they have to do and accomplish and things like that. They're not going to Cali with a dollar and a dream. Like they don't stack their money in some type of way, you know, whatever they were doing as a kid selling, you know, newspapers, lemonade, whatever, whatever it is they felt they needed to do. Um, so, uh, I mentioned that they kind of have a hard life. Um, they've lived, if you've had conversations with Capricorns, it's never like an easy life for them. Capricorn is not for the weak. Um, it's definitely not just like Scorpio. Um, they're also can be like attracted to older people, like older mates. So, so you'll notice like age differences in Capricorns and things like that. They'll either, um, especially women, they're definitely going to go for older men, like almost 90% of the time, like much older, like not like just a year or two, but we're talking at least 10 years. Um, because Capricorns are so much more mature than the rest. So it's like, of course we're going to go for older and even Capricorn men will go for older women as well. Um, they do have like a coldness about them. Um, but they are sensitive and they do have a soft spot in there. It's not quite as cold as like an Aquarius, but um, Capricorns can come off as, you know, mean and, you know, kind of shut off, um, kind of with that wall built up and, and kind of cold, you know, they're not like, they're definitely not warm and fuzzy, like their opposite sign of, uh, of cancer, you know, they're the, um, I forget what the other analogy I use for that, but yeah, the opposite of warm and fuzzy. <laughs> so, um, Capricorn deals with the material world, as I mentioned, when I use the Madonna, Madonna song, Material Girl. So it's all about what's happening like on earth. Capricorn energy itself, and I'm not talking about individual people, Capricorn energy itself is not really in touch with their spirituality. You know what I'm saying? Um, so there could be a lot of people with Capricorn energy that could in fact, you know, like be atheists and things like that because they don't believe in their, like they don't have faith in what happens after you die. Like the material world, uh, worse, um, having that kind of mindset 
or like even being a Satanist and things like that, because Capricorn also kind of represents the devil. Um, I hadn't gotten there yet, but I just wanted to say that in connection with this. Um, it's just that you just don't believe in life after you die. You don't believe in that your soul lives on. Um, so it's interesting because Capricorn trines Pisces. I think it trines Pisces. Um, or it may sexto Pisces and Pisces is all about the spiritual world. So a Capricorn might want to get a little bit of that Pisces energy to kind of make them not so like mean and cold hearted so that they can, you know, have some type of faith within themselves. Um, and it also deals with the outside world. So they're not really concerned with like being at home and home and family life and things like that. They're concerned with working and building legacies and uh, building an empire and things like that. Um, they are very concerned about their reputation as well. They will do whatever it takes to uphold their, their reputation. So uh, think about that when you think about a lot of these celebrities and entertainers out there who really want to maintain their reputation. That's very much Capricorn. A positive re uh, reputation, might I add, when they have a lot of dirt under the surface. Um, they're very conscientious people. So they're, um, aware of what they're doing usually at all times, whether it's good or bad. So since they've, you know, weighed all the options and thoroughly thought it through because they're methodical and they're planners and they're all about the slow, um, the slow chug to the top, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day when it comes for Capricorn, but they're very conscientious. They're aware. So like, basically if a Capricorn does something bad, they're aware of it. You know what I'm saying? They've weighed all the options. They're like, the worst that could happen to me is this. You know, I've already weighed that. Like, I would do that. And same thing with something good. Usually Capricorns aren't going to go out of their way to do something bad, but just know they know. That's all. Um, they can be, like, very inspiring in a real way because they're just very real. So um, they're, like, the definition of kind of, like, a rags-to-riches type of story because Capricorns work. Like, they work hard. You know what I mean? Um, but, like, in terms of, like, being motivational and, like, giving motivational type of speeches and things like that, um, people who appreciate, like, a real approach and not, like, pie-in-the-sky dreams, you know, you would ap appreciate a Capricorn speaking. Um, Capricorn is about big business. Like I said, like the fortune 500 companies and things like that. Um, it also represents the government. When we talk about big business, we talk about the highest office and things like that. Um, uh, the body parts that Capricorn rules are the knees, bones, teeth, and a skeletal system and skin. So you may notice a lot of people with Capricorn energy may have really, really nice teeth or they could have really, really jacked up teeth. So it's always one or the other. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, Capricorn is the sign of the devil. Remember how I mentioned Scorpio is the sign of death? Well, Capricorn is the sign of the devil, just the energy, not individual people. I'm talking about the energy, okay? Um, so think the omen, the movie The Omen, which is also one of my favorite movies. I know I'm always referencing movies in these videos. Um, so uh, it's like Scorpio is the actual presence of death and then Capricorn is the devil that's making it happen. So the little, what was his name? Damien, him growing up to be, you know, this very, very powerful figure in, um, in government. I think that his father was an ambassador and the father was killed or something. And then it was his uncle that, um, became his guardian. And then he ended up becoming a real, uh, high profile in the government. Like that's very, um, by any means necessary, doing whatever it takes to get to the top so you can like control the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Capricorn and in that vein, in my opinion, Capricorn energy represents the elite, like the powers that be the ones that's pulling all of the puppet strings. So that 1% that we are trying to rebel against, that's Capricorn energy. In my opinion, it just represents that the very most dark side of Capricorn energy. Um, I mentioned they're about generational wealth. Um, they can be loners, you know, um, they can be very comfortable with being secluded and, you know, even though they're about being out in the world, they, um, may not have a lot of friends. They may not really be in touch with their family like that. So they go to work and they may not come home to anybody. Um, uh, on the flip side of, you know, working hard for your money and all of that type of stuff, um, women could 
also be kind of gold diggers. You know, remember that cap is about money and financial security and not being broke. So women could always, uh, so Capricorn energy in women can uh, make them seek out men who uh, are very wealthy and who have a lot of money. And also because Capricorn also likes to be in control, Capricorn women may also seek out men that are not quite on their level so that they can be the providers. Therefore, they are controlling the relationship. So they are the man in the relationship and things of that nature. Um, so uh, they can also be kind of like sellouts and prone to selling their souls for material gain or to get to the top or to be famous or to get that job or whatever the case may be. Um, they are very ruthless in their pursuits. Um, and they are capable of using people. Remember I said, I use is, uh, the Capricorns, um, slogan, um, to get what they want, especially anything success wise, but they will use, they could use that same tactic in relationships. So, um, just remember that as well, ruthless in their pursuits, whatever a Capricorn wants, they're going to strive to get. So if they want you to be their man or they don't want you to be their woman, they're going to strive to make that happen. They're going to be like, I could bring X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of this shit to the table and I'm the best one for you. So you can't deny me. You know what I'm saying? So a Capricorn will definitely, they're very confident in that respect. Um, so, uh, since they're always working, there is the potential for Cap people with Capricorn energy to cheat, um, with coworkers. So definitely be careful. I mean, they don't be nowhere else except for working. So whatever job they do, they work in, you know, all the time. If you're not seeing them like that, you know, you might want to do a little checkup on them just to make sure. Um, Capricorns have an extreme like fear of poverty and being broke. So they will do whatever it takes to avoid being broke or to avoid being homeless or experiencing poverty or anything like that. And that may mean going against their morals or that may mean selling their souls so they can make some money. You know, if they're in dire straits, it just depends. They would never want it to get to that point, but that's why they work so hard so that they don't have to put themselves at risk to be okay financially. Um, so, uh, I mentioned that they can live a tough life, um, kind of a hard life where they grow up really fast. So they may, um, like not really had a childhood like that. So, you know, it just, something happened in their life where, you know, they had to grow up real fast and I don't know, be the second mom to the kids. They had to, uh, start working at an early age and things of that nature. Um, the moving out sometimes that's, uh, involuntary. Sometimes that may have just been a situation that you had to deal with. So, um, that's something that can manifest. Um, Capricorn is built for long-term relationships. So they may stay in, uh, relationships or marriages too long and not be happy in them. Think Mary J. Blige. And that was an example of her dating down instead of dating up so that she could be in control of the situation. But she does have that moon in cancer though. Um, but in terms of longevity, because they rule by Saturn, Capricorn, once they got you, they want to stay there. Like they don't really want to get a divorce. They don't really want to break up. They want to try to make it work. So they're willing to work hard for relationships, even relationships that are kind of like doomed. Um, they, I mentioned them being like an old soul. They kind of feel like they've been here before and things like that because it, uh, um, it's ruled by Saturn. So Saturn represents karma. So it's kind of like what goes around comes back around. So they may have been in this life, you know, before you may, they may come back as your, you know, what, who used to be like your grandfather or something like that. Um, uh, they always want to prove themselves with things. So they are liable to do things on their own just so they can prove to people that they can do it. You know what I mean? And that may, and that may work into the bone. They might do back breaking work to make that happen, but you know, they just, they always want to prove themselves. Um, they're very practical, uh, very down to earth, very serious, just like, you know, the earth, other earth signs. Um, I mentioned they need to be in control. Um, they are, uh, built for longevity, as I already mentioned due to the Saturn influence. So if they're not starting their own business, um, they're liable to stay at a company they work at for years, um, or retiring there. They're not really the people who like switch up jobs and things like that, like a Sag or Gemini or an Aries or something like that. They're going to stick it out for the long haul. 
Um, they are also another one of the military signs. So this would be the person that makes mili uh, the military a career, like a decorated veteran, a career veteran, top brass, retired Marines, things of that nature. Um, as I mentioned before, it does deal with government. So it does deal with the actual presidency. Um, uh, Capricorn also deals with long monies, generational wealth. I mentioned that, um, another sign of law enforcement, but more of like chief of police, um, the top dog in charge, whoever that is, Capricorn represents the leader and even, you know, the leader of the country. So unfortunately, you know, that man is the leader of our country. Now that's representative of Capricorn energy. And it could be anybody who's the president of the United States. It's just the government itself represents Capricorn. Um, so, uh, so it's the sign of authority. So any, um, anybody who's in some type of authority or power, so it could be in other countries, dictators or Kings and Queens and things of that nature. Um, it's usually the type of authority that people try to rebel against though, because there's so much structure and there's so much, um, so there's so many different walls to break down. There's not a lot of freedom and leeway. Um, so I mentioned why Capricorns have the symbol of the GOAT, uh, the acronym, the greatest of all time, because they do work very, very hard. Um, Capricorn is very patient. Like I said before, Capricorn is okay with a project taking like 10 years to get off the ground. They're very patient with that. So they'll stay at their nine to five so that they can get their entrepreneurial uh, shit taken care of. And they will take the time to make sure that they... Um, nurture that and they manifest that and that is the best that it could possibly be so it can leave a, a lasting legacy. Um, uh, I just mentioned that they plan and take their time. Um, they are not about get rich quick schemes. So you're not going to see that from a cat. Um, they are traditional in the sense of work hard, you get what you want. Um, this is definitely another, uh, like this is a power couple sign, um, like Scorpio and Capricorn could really rule the world. Like literally, I definitely believe that the elites <laughs> represent Scorpios and Capricorns. Um, it reminds me of Frank and Claire Underwood from, uh, the show, the Netflix show house of cards, like, oh my gosh, the power and the manipulation. And it's all about the government. Like, that is a relationship between a Capricorn and a Scorpio, like completely, completely. So, um, in the most darkest manifestation of those signs, of course. Um, so Capricorn also represents discipline. Um, Capricorn is, um, the planet Pluto rather is currently transiting, uh, the sign of Capricorn right now in the cosmic air, um, the cosmic universe rather. And, um, it's going to be there until I think about like, I don't know, 2025 or something along those lines. But this is slowly because, you know, I mentioned Pluto has to deal with transformation and um, rebirth and death and regeneration. So this is like literally Pluto is trying to dismantle and kind of like destroy this current system of power and authority and things like that, that we currently know to uh, birth anew, you know, regeneration and things like that. So hopefully when we get out of this Pluto and Capricorn, and then Pluto goes into Aquarius, the forward thinking and progressive sign, we're definitely going to see a change in how, um, in how we see authority and how we see, you know, the government and structure, like it's coming y'all. Like, I know that people are like, you know, politics and everything that's going on right now is just trash, but it's coming. Like I, you know, it's in the stars. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, Capricorn, as I mentioned before, they can be a Debbie downer. They can also come across as a little boring, um, may only talk to you about their work and things like that. And you just be like, I'm gonna talk about something fun. You know what I mean? Um, they can be also kind of ho-hum in their attire, typically like wearing earth tones and things like that. They may not be very fashionable. Um, but on the flip side, because, uh, they're, they, they can actually be very statuesque. Like I mentioned before, Capricorn rules, um, the teeth, the knees, the bones. So that could create, um, a very tall person, very statuesque, um, even, uh, like model type because of bone structure and things of that nature. Um, let's see here. Uh, Capricorns, uh, they may not want a family, but if they do have one, 
they're going to work to the bone to support a family. It's nothing like having Capricorn energy as parents because they are going to teach you discipline, they're going to teach you responsibility, and they're going to work hard to support you. They may be very hard on you, but they're going to work hard to support you. I'm interested to know if um, Venus and Serena's father was a Capricorn or has some type of Capricorn energy. I'm going to try to look that up because he just gives me all of that like kind of Capricorn energy type of vibes, like instilling that discipline and responsibility in, in them, which enabled them to be the goats of tennis, um, basically. Um, so uh, they uh, will not give up. So they're definitely not quitters. They're definitely persistent, always chugging along. Um, they are a, a cardinal sign as well. So they're initiators. And this is a sign that starts off winter. So um, it's very fitting because it's cold. It's when the sun is at its lowest point. The days are shorter, uh, the shortest that they can possibly be during Capricorn season. So um, it definitely fits. So uh, I feel like that's where winter is coming came from. All you Game of Thrones fans like that. I do not actually watch Game of Thrones. I'm probably the only person in the world that doesn't watch it. But I know that they say winter is coming. So that's very Capricorn. So just know that Capricorn starts out winter. Um, and Capricorn also, obviously, as I mentioned before, deals with power and prestige. Um, so I just wanted to make a note that um, it may seem that I may have mentioned a lot of negative traits for Capricorn, um, but understand that there are a lot of uh, entertainers and public figures that have Capricorn energy, which means that they have developed a lot of discipline in this lifetime, and they're about longevity, especially when it comes to their careers. So um, they've lasted very long in this business because of the Cap energy that they have. And I'm going to mention a couple of celebrities um, that exhibit these traits. Denzel Washington, I mean, come on, obviously. Um, Aaliyah, I feel like had she, you know, stayed alive, rest in peace, Aaliyah, that she would have definitely um, had a very, you know, long career. And But she has left a mark. You know, she has her legacy and everything. And people, for the most part, they respect that. Um, Mary J. Blige, uh, Issa Rae, um, she'd be about her business. Come on, let me tell you. Um, Michelle Obama, um, Tina Lawson, who was Beyonce's mom, come on now, um, LeBron James, I mentioned him, and probably the ultimate Capricorn, Martin Luther King Jr., of course, we have Martin Luther King Day. So um, I had to bring him up. So I wanted to name uh, a lot of celebrities that have accomplished a lot in their careers because I don't want you to get it twisted and think that Capricorns, just because they represent the devil, that all Capricorns are devils. No, that's not what I'm saying. The energy represents the devil. Scorpio energy represents death. Does that mean that all Scorpios are going to die? Well, everybody dies at some point, but it doesn't mean that all Scorpios are out to kill everybody. That's not what it means. It's just the energy of the signs and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, so I actually did pretty good with this video. I thought that I would need to do this in two parts, but we're at, uh, just under 33 minutes. So I hope you enjoyed my video on cap. We only have two signs left to go. So join me next time when I discuss Aquarius and then I will be discussing Pisces and then we'll be done with the signs. I'm thinking about doing like a little recap video to kind of recap what I said and, um, uh, mention some other celebrities that may have energy in the signs. Um, they may not necessarily be their sun signs and things like that. So um, let me know if you want to see anything like that. But uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.